same violence as another kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's a Black Gen Z mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's get into the video. Well, more than 100,000 adults in Shelby County will soon have new opportunities. That's to earn a high school diploma and learn new job skills for free. Brad Broder shows us how Goodwill's Excel Center is giving people hope to chase their dreams no matter their ages. So you got to start somewhere. Um getting your GED, getting a diploma, and getting a job, okay? Those are some of the contributing factors that result in successful people or people who are, you know, at least able to take care of themselves. It's life-changing to me, honestly. Uh, this is something I tried and tried to do so many different times. 32-year-old Stacy Douglas dropped out of high school as a teenage mother. However, she never lost hope about one day earning her high school diploma. It's not too late. You can do this. The now mother of five kept at it. Th Dang. <laughs> she kept having kids, too. She kept at that, too. <laughs> that teenage pregnancy didn't stop her from getting them chilling out. Thanks to the Excel Center, Goodwill's free adult high school and workforce training hub, Douglas will graduate in June with pharmacy and computer software qualifications. Honestly, it has opened so many doors already and I haven't even gotten a cer the certification in my hands yet. Those with the Excel Center are excited about creating other success stories beyond this school near Perkins and I-240. I always felt like I was down at the barrier. And uh, now, now I feel like I'm, I'm on top because I have this paper. Cleans are you notice something though? I ain't seen no brothers. <laughs> they got all these programs, and the programs are supposed to be for brothers to, you know, get off the streets, or at least that's their intention. But the only ones taking advantage of them. Our sisters are underway to create more specialty training programs locally and graduate hundreds more students from the program. This is all thanks to a new $12 million federal grant for the Excel Center. The goal is to put a significant dent on the 120,000 adults in Shelby County without a high school diploma and limited options. Making sure that the students just don't leave with the diploma, but make sure that they have the qualifications they need to go out and build a career. Staff is hopeful the grant dollars will allow for five Excel centers to eventually open in Memphis's highest dropout areas per capita, including Raleigh Frazier. The communities that we needed this, we didn't have places that we could actually go and actually be successful. Enrollment is now open for the session of classes starting August 1st here at the Excel Center. If you're interested in signing up or learning more about what's available, go to our website, abc24.com. In East Memphis, I'm Brad Bro for a vigil. Our Courtney Allen was there, has more tonight on how the couple is being remembered this evening. Courtney. That's right, Tracy Marius. The sign here at the church reads, Love in Action. The pastor told me today that is how Christopher and Katrina Gaines lived their lives. She says she's known them for more than 20 years. I will miss their smiles coming in church every Sunday, prepared to sing. Pastor Sharon Ogilvy met Christopher and Katrina Gaines at Wayman Chapel AME Church in 1996. Mm. Chris and Katrina went to this church. Chris has been a member of this church since early childhood. Ogilvy says Chris and Katrina were active members over the years, impacting the lives of many. Like I said, guys, um, the best of us are getting taken out by the worst of us and it shows here it shows in a lot of these stories that i do it's crazy man in the community they it's 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 like a lot of people are not making it a lot of the good people too 
A lot of the people that we need in the community, the moral compass of the community, they're getting taken out. These super gremlins are on demon time. She had a phenomenal dance ministry and it wasn't just for the little ones. She had a dance ministry that was from the little ones even to senior ladies. More than a hundred people gathered at the church Tuesday evening for the couple's vigil. Columbia police say Chris and Katrina were killed Monday morning by their son, 27-year-old Demondre Gaines. The chief of police and vice mayor were among those in the pews Tuesday night as speakers shared messages of healing and love. That unconditional love, and they love me through thick and thin, and I love them as well. Ogilvie says she was blessed to know them. They loved each other. They love their church, they love their family, they love their community. Ogilvie says Christopher and Katrina raised their children at this church. Back to you. Oh, there's got to be so much pain in that yeah. whole community and that family. Thank wow. you, Courtney. We are also closely following updates from Columbia Police. We will have those on our app and our website, WSMV.com. Well, let's talk to what I'm here on the corner of MLK and Medgar Evers, and it's a very tranquil scene compared to just a couple hours ago where a drive by shooting just took place. Uh, uh, excuse me. I I'm getting live updates as we speak. I've just been updated to the amount of casualties from this drive by shooting, and I'm getting reports that two people were actually declared deceased and 27 others were shot and injured but are in stable condition. And although we must pray for the families of the fallen, we must also praise God for the aim of the super gremlin. If you want to know more about the victims of this crime, make sure you add BGZM News 17 on Patreon at www.patreon.com backslash Black Gen Z Mindset. Also, don't forget to like the video, share the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and comment on the video to continue the discussion on how we can find solutions to all this sun violence in the streets. For more hard-hitting news coverage from the community by the community, I'm Jen Quavius Jackson here live reporting from Atlanta, Georgia, BGZM News 17. And cut. All right, dog. Let's get the out of here for these niggas come Whoa. back. Whoa. Yo. Whoa. Ain't that that nigga Jen Nah, Quavius? nah, that ain't me. That ain't hey, me. He just went live. That ain't me. That funky ass yeah, suit that's, that nigga. that's not me. Hey, hey get hey, that nigga. Jen Quavius hey, Jackson here live hey, reporting from Atlanta, Georgia. Pray for me. It's still surreal. Standing outside the home they all grew up in. It's just so unreal that this is the last place that my brother was. It's hard for Tammy Young to process her baby brother, Galen Young, is no longer with them. I just wish the June 5th had never happened. A day their lives changed forever. Police say Young was sitting inside his mother's home on Horn Lake Road when Miracle Rutherford came crashing in. The most heartbreaking part. Wow. <clears throat> So the man's just sitting in his home and this woman drives her vehicle into his living room. Imagine just Netflixing and chilling and a whole Nissan Altima comes straight through your house. No one knew the 45 year old was inside. And I told the officer and so I'm so glad my brother was not at home because he'd have been sitting right there, exactly where that car was. But hours later, the family made the gruesome discovery while searching through debris. Just the vision, the the image of my brother is just um, something you can't forget. If he'd have just been a few minutes late, I would not have known the name of Miracle Rutherford. Mm. I wouldn't have known this would have happened to my brother. Rutherford is now charged with vehicular homicide and failure to exercise due care. Court documents show she was driving at least 61 miles per hour before Dang. crashing into the home. The speed limit is 45. It just makes me feel sad because uh, 
My brother's life was taken due to someone just speeding. And as you see in the streets all the time, they're just speeding, no regard. Hold on, these this is Nissan Altima violence. <laughs> we need to take away all the Altimas. This is straight up Nissan Altima violence. Everyone who owns a Nissan Altima, they need to come around to the Nissan um, dealership and have their transmissions and motors removed. For the, for the speed limit. Unable to change the past, they will make sure this son, brother, father, basketball star, and friend will never be forgotten. We're gonna be his voice moving forward. Today was the first court date. And, and the crazy thing is, this brother right here, he actually coached my sister. My sister went to Lane College. She played basketball and ran cross country. It's HBCU out there in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, you can see him. He is assistant basketball coach, and he was actually trying to get the head coaching job. So for this brother to be taken out so soon is crazy. All the young black men that he positively influenced um, you know, former NBA player, former professional basketball player. I mean, he had everything going for him. And it's just sad that it ended in the way that it did. And friend will never be forgotten. We're going to be his voice moving forward. Today was the first court date. Um, we're just going to be his voice to, to make sure the person that is responsible is held accountable for his death. Reporting in Southwest Memphis, Janae Lewis, WREG News Channel 3. Tonight, new information on a deadly car crash into a home on Horn Lake Road in Whitehaven. Hillcrest High School and UNC Charlotte basketball standout Galen Young was inside the home at the time and died. He was 45 years old. Local 24 News reporter Caitlin McCarthy has more on Young's life on the court. All those who knew Galen Young are heartbroken over the news of his death. But through this tragedy, he's remembered as a great friend and an outstanding basketball player. The life of Galen Young ended tragically early Saturday morning. Memphis police responded to a car that crashed into a Whitehaven home around 3 a.m. The blue tarp covers where the car came through the home and hit Young. Mm. He was pronounced dead at the scene. His mother was also inside at the time, but was luckily not hurt. But the Memphis native is best known for his talent on the basketball court. Young started at Hillcrest High School, where he was a standout for the team. He then took his skills to Northwest Mississippi Community College, where he played for two seasons before playing at UNC Charlotte. In 1999... And that's crazy, because uh, my cousin actually went to UNC Charlotte as well and Young played basketball. Young became a Conference USA Tournament MVP with the Charlotte 49ers. The school expressed its condolences to Young's family and friends and highlighted the impact he had on the team. Young also played for several years professionally in the Continental Basketball Association. He most recently assistant coached the men's basketball team at Lane College for five seasons. Mm. Memphis men's basketball coach Penny Hardaway posted on Instagram saying he saw Young just two weeks ago. He too is saddened and added Young was born to compete. Mm. The driver was issued a citation. The investigation is ongoing, but more charges will likely be filed. Reporting in downtown Memphis, Caitlin McCarthy, Local 24 News. New tonight, a 19-year-old woman is now charged with killing a well-known Memphis man after she crashed her car into his home last June. Yeah, the family of the victim, Jalen Young, tells Fox 13 they want justice. Fox 13's Greg Coy is live downtown. Greg, uh, Young's family knows he was a well-known man, both college basketball player and a coach. Yeah, he was also a mentor to a lot of young men in this city, and that is why the family tells me that they plan to be at every court hearing to make sure that 19-year-old Miracle Rutherford understands that she has to be held accountable for the crimes that she's accused of. Mm. And this kind of reminds me of the uh, sister who killed those two officers. Um, I believe that was in Philly. So... <laughs> It looks like I, I don't really trust these sisters behind the wheel. I love my brother. Um, he has such a big heart. Tamara Young talked with me about her brother Galen, a Memphis high school basketball standout, former NBA player turned coach and mentor. I loved being with him. He had such a, 
a kind heart, a good spirit. Young was sitting in the corner of his family home when police say that Miracle Rutherford was speeding. Her car went airborne and slammed into the home, killing Young, a father of two. We just reckless. Just, I mean, huh, with no type of forethought on how this would affect anybody around her, any other drivers on the road. These female super gremlins are on demon time. We didn't know that Galen was inside the home. And so when the accident occurred, we just started to clean up and just trying to salvage what we could um, that was in the room. And when we found him, it was just devastating. Behind me is the house where the accident happened. And I see this blue tarp. When you drive by, what do you think? I just wish that that day had never happened. Um, but I do want her to be held accountable. A lot of people think that, um, oh, my bad, you know, it's just a mistake. No, you took my brother's life. Police say Rutherford was driving 16 miles over the speed limit, had no license, no driver's insurance. No license, no insurance, no nothing, but she's behind the, the wheel. Um, sounds like vehicle violence to me. Nissan Altima violence. Confiscate all the Nissan Altima. See, this is my thing. If somebody's doing something illegal, they, they gonna do it whether there's a rule or not. So we see people using their vehicles as weapons. We see knives being used as weapons. Um, and you don't hear people calling for the banning of knives it's always the guns but we all we all understand um like the famous line uh i believe it's from um money talks it's like chris rock he said guns don't kill people stupid mfers with guns kill people so that's my take on it nissan altimas don't kill people stupid mfers or stupid super gremlins on demon time kill people. She's been charged with vehicular homicide in the death of Galen Young. She has to face the consequences for her actions. And we will be my brother's voice. We will be at every court date. And I also checked the Shelby County Criminal Court website and I discovered that Rutherford is out on bond, but she's gonna have another court hearing in November. Live in Memphis, I'm Greg Coy, Fox 13 News. All right, guys, so I did want to show you um, his last place of employment was with Lane College. He was an assistant basketball coach and head cross-country coach, um, and he definitely um, coached my sister. So, you know, this brother was impacting um, a lot of lives in the community in a positive way, in the most positive way, and it's just um, it's super sad and unfortunate that he was – taken so soon man like i said the worst of us are taking out the best of us